Hello everyone, I'm Father John Camus. I'm the pastor of St. Jean Baptiste. It's a church on the corner of 76th Street and Lexington Avenue in New York. So good to be with you. Today we're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. To prepare ourselves to listen to the Word of God and then to celebrate the Eucharist, let's open our hearts to Christ present and ask for healing and guidance, enlightenment and courage. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give life to your people. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. So today I'm going to read the first reading and the gospel reading, and we'll reflect, they're connected, so we'll reflect on them today. So the first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this is well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth but he shall tell them that I command him. The word of the Lord. So it's kind of the framework for a prophet. He's describing the prophet, the God working through the prophet. And we're going to hear that now in the gospel reading. So the gospel is taken from the gospel of St. Mark. They came to Capernaum and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not like the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. And all were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. So for the past two weeks, we focused our attention on accounts of the call of the apostles. Today, we begin a year-long reflection on Jesus' ministry as it's presented in the Gospel of Mark. His presentation is the most economical of all the evangelists. For example, in just 20 verses of his first chapter, he describes John the Baptist and his ministry, the baptism of Jesus, his temptation in the desert, and the call of the first apostles, all in 20 verses. Now in verse 21 of that same chapter, he begins his presentation of Jesus' ministry. So today we reflect on Mark's account of the first day of Jesus' ministry. Jesus was an itinerant preacher. He taught on hillsides along the Sea of Galilee and in neighborhood synagogues. He began his ministry by visiting the synagogue of Capernaum. For us, to get a good picture of what happened there, we need to understand the role 
of the synagogue in Jesus' day. We tend to think of the synagogue as a Jewish church with a rabbi functioning in a way similar to a priest or minister. This is somewhat true in the synagogue of today. But in Jesus' day, the temple in Jerusalem was the center of prayer and worship. There, the great festivals were celebrated with solemnity and music. There, the daily sacrifices were offered by the priests. Unlike the temple, the synagogue wasn't primarily a place of prayer, though morning, afternoon, and evening prayers were recited there. But by law, every Jewish community of at least 10 households was obliged to have a synagogue. It was essentially an educational institution and functioned like a community center. It was led by a president who was responsible for the schedule of prayer and daily distribution of alms. He was assisted by a minister who cared for the sacred scrolls, the maintenance of the building, and the education of the children. However, the synagogue didn't have a resident preacher or rabbi as it does today. It was up to the president to establish a roster of speakers who would be competent to preach to the community on the Sabbath. We have to remember too that the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, were revered as the direct instruction of God. The devout Jew voted his, devoted his life to the study of Torah and its interpretation, which is called the Talmud. Over time, a group of scholars developed called the scribes. They were the experts in the Torah and the law. They extracted rules and regulations from that law and were always ready to find additional ways to expand them. They were responsible for evolving the commandments from 10 articulated in the Bible to 613. They, with the assistance of Pharisees, managed to deconstruct Judaism into a mass of legalistic hoops. When Jesus preached in the synagogue in Capernaum that Sabbath day, everybody knew that he was special. The congregants exclaimed, what is this? A new teaching with authority. What they're referring to there is the scribe's way of teaching. They would never say anything on their own. They would say, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that. But they're always looking, they're going back, looking for authority someplace else to put on what they were saying. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus' message was straight from the heart. He didn't generate new laws for people to follow. He enriched the principles of the law by adding compassion and love to them. As he would later teach, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He freed the people's spirit by lifting the heavy weight of the law that the scribes and Pharisees laid on them. He called them to a new way of life. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. He not only preached a different message from the scribes, he backed up his message with tremendous spiritual power. That day, he showed that he was a powerful exorcist. There was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, and as soon as the spirit saw Jesus, the spirit that possessed the man gave testimony to Jesus. The man shouted out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus issued a simple response, quiet, 
come out of him. What have we learned from this first day of Jesus' ministry? We learned that Jesus was a breath of fresh air for the people of his day. Some kind of change was coming. The people could feel it in the compassion and loving concern that Jesus generated. He spoke his message from the heart. It was a message of hope and love. The kingdom of God was at hand. There was power behind Jesus' message. Even the spirits of darkness recognized it. The spirit in the possessed man called Jesus the Holy One of God. The spirit acknowledged that Jesus had power over him and even asked if he had come to destroy him. So for us, the lesson from this first day of Jesus' ministry is clear and simple. If we're going to take up the ministry of Jesus, as we have been asked to do, we must be like, be of like spirit, compassionate, hopeful, and loving. His ministry was a ministry of the heart. If we're to follow him, we must liberate our hearts by accepting God's unconditional and transformative love. That's the first step. We have to accept God's unconditional and transformative love. The second step is to become a conduit of God's love for those who are searching for God or for those whose hope is weak or depleted. So two simple steps. Open our hearts to receive and then open our hearts to give. And all of that, the message of Jesus and Jesus himself will be present. So by our like, Christ-like lives, we can join him in building the kingdom of God on earth, one day at a time. So let's gather our petitions now. St. Paul prayed that Christians be free of anxieties. So we call upon the Lord to grant our needs and the needs of all God's children. We pray for the church. May we witness to the presence of Christ by the way we live the gospel he preached. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for national leaders. May they be sympathetic to the needs and hopes and dreams of the least among those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the young women of our high school. May they grow in wisdom, faith, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for peace in the Middle East and in Eastern Europe. We pray for all who have died there and for those who continue to suffer. Let us pray to the Lord. And this weekend, we're celebrating Holocaust Remembrance Day, and we extend our prayers to all people throughout the world whose lives are threatened because of their race or religion. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's lift up our personal intentions. Lord of loving kindness, we turn to you in our need. Free us from our anxieties so that we may follow with all our heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands, the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the 
good of all the church. Lord, be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. With love we celebrate his death, with living faith we proclaim his resurrection, and with unwavering hope we await his return in glory. Now with the saints and all the angels, we praise you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus, deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord God, you invigorate us with this help to our salvation. By this Eucharist, give us true faith. Uh, give the true faith continued growth throughout the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.